But we begin tonight at T minus 65 hours. The countdown is now on for Democrats to finally finish off health reform, to get it passed and signed into law. At exactly 2.07 p.m. this afternoon, House Democrats officially posted this document online. This is the 153-page House amendment to the Senate health reform bill. And this document getting posted online today at 2.07 p.m. starts a clock ticking. It means that the earliest that a vote on that thing can now happen in the House is at 2.07 p.m. on Sunday, 72 hours after it was posted online, roughly 65 hours or so uh, from this moment right now. Sunday is the day. Mark it in your calendars. Democrats had a longer than expected wait for the CBO score on what they're going to be voting for, but what they finally got from the CBO, they like. They like it very much. The bill will mean that 95% of Americans will have health insurance. That's 32 million more people than are covered right now. President Obama had said he wanted a bill that costs $950 billion or less. The costs actually come in about $10 billion under the president's target. Fiscally speaking, the spending is worth it. The overall health reform project should cut the deficit by $138 billion over the next 10 years. And then by a whopping $1.2 trillion the following 10 years. Now, after those numbers came out today, House Democrats essentially went sprinting for the nearest TV camera. We uh, are absolutely giddy uh, of uh, uh, the Great news that we've gotten uh, from uh, CBO. This is a magnificent bill for the American people. And the news from CBO indicate that what we're doing uh, will be great for the American people way out into the future. Sharing in that giddiness today was President Obama, who canceled his scheduled trip to Indonesia and Australia in order to be in town when the House and Senate votes go down. The reform we seek would bring $1.3 trillion in deficit reduction over the next two decades. That, that makes this legislation the most significant effort to reduce deficits since the Balanced Budget Act in the 1990s. It's true what he's saying, actually, about bringing down the deficit. Nothing since 1993 has been projected to reduce the deficit as much as this bill does. You remember how when President Bush took over from President Clinton, President Clinton handed him a huge, big budget surplus, which Bush then turned into giant deficits? Um, nothing has been as good f as this health reform bill for the deficit since the time of Bill Clinton. In response to the good CBO report and the cover that it gives to any Democrats who might have been wavering on their vote on fiscal grounds, in response to the impending passage of health reform, Republicans who are opposed to health reform today um, got a little weird. I want to send a couple of messages to my colleagues in the House. If you voted no and you vote yes and you lose your election and you think you're not, you're, any nomination to a federal position isn't going to be held in the Senate, I've got news for you. <laughs> it's going to be held. Senator Tom Coburn, um, you know, as principled as ever, <laughs> uh, pledging to place a hold, see if you can follow this, on any House Democrat who votes yes on health reform and then loses their reelection bid and then gets offered a federal position by President Obama while Tom Coburn is still in the Senate. So in other words, you've been warned. Your potential nomination that comes after you vote yes, then potentially get voted out of office, will be held up. Also, Tom Coburn promises to never give you a ride if he sees you hitchhiking in Oklahoma someday, unless he's already going that way anyway. The news that the bill will cut the deficit by more than expected, will cover more people than expected, and will cost less than expected, seem to catch opponents of reform off guard today, because in some cases they are still reading from the old talking points. This program not only does not control costs on a federal level, but it also does not control it on the state level. It is bad for taxpayers. You're still going to spend a trillion dollars to impose government-run health care on the American people. This bill spends too much. It taxes too much. It costs too much. That guy right there, um, the last guy there was uh, Phil Gingry. He was the one at the end right after John Boehner. Uh, Phil Gingry expressing his grave concern about how much this costs. 
To be clear, uh, the CBO is now projecting that this bill will cut the deficit. Cut the deficit by $138 billion over 10 years. You can see it right there. $138 billion, not added to the deficit, but subtracted from the deficit. Th this is the same Phil Gingrey and the same John Boehner who voted for the Medicare Part D drug benefit in 2003. When the CBO scored that bill, at that time, the CBO said that bill would raise the deficit by $394 billion. And yet, Phil Gingrey and John Boehner, now so piously concerned about how much things cost, happily voted for Medicare Part D anyway. When Republicans passed the Bush tax cuts that same year, the CBO score of that one, at that time, said that legislation would raise the deficit by $349 billion, and Republicans, including Phil Gingry, had no problem voting yes. When Republicans passed the first Bush tax cuts in 2001, the CBO score of that one, at that time, said it would raise the deficit by $1.3 trillion, trillion with a T. And Republicans, including John Boehner, went along for that ride, too. So let's just make sure we're here on the same page, okay? Phil Gingry and John Boehner say yes to adding $400 billion to the deficit for Bush's Medicare thing, yes to adding $350 billion to the deficit for Bush's first tax cuts for rich people, yes to adding $1.3 trillion to the deficit for Bush's other tax cuts. Those three votes projected to add $2 trillion to the deficit. Votes yes on all of those. But when confronted with this one, this current one, this health care one, which actually cuts the deficit by $138 billion... This is their response. It costs too much. The math actually doesn't work if you're willing to actually do it. Joining us now is Howard Dean. He's former governor of Vermont, former chairman of the Democratic National Committee. He's now a consultant to McKenna, Long & Aldridge. He is also the founder of Democracy for America and a contributor to CNBC. Could you possibly have another title or affiliation? <laughs> I'm sure I can find one someplace. <laughs> it's going to be like showing pictures of the grandkids at some point. We're just going to have to well, like, sort of God. cascade them all down. Uh, you were a pretty vocal critic of this health reform effort just a few months ago. What would you say to congressional Democrats who might still be wavering on this tonight? I think they ought to vote for it. Um, I think the House bill, uh, the Senate uh, has improved it a lot. But I don't, I don't think we can call this bill health care reform because it really isn't. Uh, what they did was expand the existing system dramatically. They, this is closer to the Romney approach in Massachusetts than it is to anything else. Having said You'd that, call it health insurance reform. No, it's certainly reform? not health insurance reform because a lot of the stuff that they say is going to be in it, like the pre-existing condition stuff, is going to be very helpful for children and young people, but not for older people, for very technical reasons. Basically, in the bill, there's not a lot of insurance reform. They meant to put some in, but it somehow lost its way in the Senate Finance Committee. Well, what do you think is the most important thing this bill will there accomplish? There are a lot of important things in this bill that will make it worth passing. Uh, the first is, it's great for small businesses. If you have fewer than 30 employees, you don't have to pay health insurance at all anymore. And it, we ought to break the link between employment and health insurance, and that begins that process. Secondly, it is good for the deficit. One figure you didn't mention, which is even more important, is over the following 10 years, after the first 10, it reduces the deficit by over a trillion dollars. Yeah. So if, if from a financial point of view, it makes a lot of sense. Medicaid is expanded so that indigent uh, working people uh, who can't get any kind of insurance get help now. Uh, children pre-existing conditions on the day the president go, signs the bill are gone. A friend of mine just had his nine-year-old daughter come down with diabetes. He's, he would lose his insurance policy under the present, for the whole family under the present circumstances. That'll be gone if this bill passes. So e even though as a, a person who kind of represents the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party, and I think we could have done a lot more, this is worth passing. And the other thing, just to be frank, Rachel, is, I, you know, this opposition, they just lied their way right through this bill. Mm -hmm. I wish that they had sat down and been honest with the American people and honest with us. This is the farthest thing from the government takeover. This is Mitt Romney's approach in Massachusetts. And in Massachusetts' defense, 97% of all the people in Massachusetts are covered. And that's a really important thing to keep in mind. So when you add it all up, uh, I think this bill should be supported. I think it needs to be supported, and I think it's going to pass. One of the grounds um, on which you, uh, uh, one of the grounds on which you ran for national office for the first time after being governor of Vermont was the fact that you'd been able to achieve almost universal coverage for kids in Vermont. We have uh, we have essentially universal. We do not have an individual mandate, which I don't think is necessary. But that's in the bill. Look, you can't have the perfect bill, and, and this isn't a perfect bill.
We have uh, we don't have an individual mandate. We use Medicaid. It's a middle class entitlement for people under 18. And 96 percent of our kids have it. 99 percent are eligible. There's 33 percent difference. If we had a mandate, we would have gotten 99 percent. But I think people don't like to be what, told what to do in their personal lives. But the big thing is, you know, th this is not a government takeover of health care. That's just a plain lie. Hmm. And so they were told to say that by a Republican spinmeister, and they've been saying it ever since. And I hope I hope we win this. And I hope when we do that the Republicans will learn that the American people respect the truth. And if you really want to oppose a bill, you ought to do it on truthful grounds instead of making stuff up every five minutes because spinmeisters tell you, you ought to do it that way. One of the things that we've covered a lot here is how outside groups, both affiliated with the Republican Party and in some cases organized by pharmaceutical companies and other and insurance companies and other people opposed to reform, how they've... Well, Use pharmaceutical companies have supported reform. Sure, and but there Big are time. in terms of corporate corporate interests being sort of uh, quietly funneled to outside organized oh, yeah, groups, right? right? Uh, and especially these groups that don't disclose their funders, like Americans right. for Prosperity and others, who've organized right. against health reform. We've covered their tactics. I wonder what you think.